Ernie, I'm, I'm just going to take a very quick trip back in time with you just for a second before we start with Prisoner's Daughter. I remember oh, yeah. when I was starting off, I was doing a lot of press junkets for about maybe three, four years. And I remember the Congo press junket. I don't remember the specifics, but you were, I think, one of the first interviewees that really came off as just very honest and you had a lot of candor and you're talking about minority representation in cinema. I don't, I'm trying to remember what the context was, but it was very honest. And I'm just wondering back then and even today, how important has it been for you as an actor just to represent yourself? You know, you're an actor's an actor, but just to right. represent yourself as an African-American and just support just minority representation in cinema and television, which since that year, maybe 94, 95, I'm sure it's right. grown. Thank goodness. Right. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, thank I mean, I think, I'm so thankful that it has changed. It has grown. I'm seeing things now. I'm seeing stories told now that I couldn't have even imagined when we did Congo back 20 years ago. But um, yeah, I, I think it's been something we've been sort of pressing for and now to see it sort of unfold. And I'm really um, hopeful that we don't try to slip back into, you know, once upon a time and and lose the the gains we've made but it's um it's it's just really it's an exciting time for me because you know as as an actor we're storytellers and there's so many stories that haven't been told or they've been told and twisted to fit someone else's idea of the world and uh and i think it can be even more inclusive not just in terms of uh groups but also in terms of countries and places and um this is a rich world and i think it's um it's great to be able to to see that unfold in, a, in an honest way. So I'm glad you remember the Congo. Because, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a while. It was a while back. But, a while uh, back. Time flies, yeah. right? <laughs> right. It does. It does. I'm glad to be still standing, still talking. Yes. But um, yeah, it's, it's really important. You mentioned Rich World. What kind of world did you... Uh, fine with Prisoner's Daughter because great filmmaker uh, behind the camera and the ensemble, including yourself, is bar none just tops. So I'm sure those are the really big elements for you to be part of this universe. Can you just talk about what it was like? Yeah, you know, I got the script and, uh, and it was kind of, do I really want to do? I mean, it's someone else's story and you know, all those things that you, before you actually read the script. And I read the script, I was really drawn to it. Uh, I've always been fascinated with the idea of family, especially fatherhood. You know, as I once said, uh, I never knew I wanted to be an actor, but I always knew I wanted to be a dad. I always wanted to to, to try and do what better, what wasn't done for me. My grandmother raised me. And, um, and so families, the family dynamic, and how do you really nurture someone and help them have their best life, all those stories. And this was a story about a dad who, you know, lived a certain way, you know, it's about to transition, but how do you make peace with that part of you that when you were living it, you thought, okay, hey, you know, I don't have to, I can do whatever I want to do, but it comes back to haunt you. Thankfully, I don't have, um, I think anything in my life now where I got to go back and say, I'm sorry for it. But, but I was fascinated by the story. Uh, Brian Cox, he directed several episodes of Oz, um, you know, back in, you know, a few years back. And uh, so I knew him as a director, but to get a chance to, to work with him as an actor and he's so wonderful obviously in the um um uh, the series which i'm going blank on the the name but um so i just love his work as oh actor. succession and yeah succession, succession. My bad. yeah Jeez. that happens see that that's when age shows it's like so like, I'm, I'm right with you <laughs> i'm like, right with you and i would feel bad if i haven't always been that way but um so i just really and kate beckinsale i'd never worked with but i just think she's She's stunning. And uh, and I was really kind of curious to see how she pulls off this, you know, that that person in Vegas where life is just sort of seems to be passing by. And I'm like, yeah, but you're so beautiful. If you just put on some makeup, you could you'd be all right. But of course, there are people who don't see that simple solution and that they still live these lives out of almost desperation. And so the story was fascinating to me, but also the relationship, the friendship. You know, I have friends like that now, and um, and I really would love to be able to say things to them like, "Oh, you know, you were such a cool guy back in." But come on, you know, you you have to be honest, <laughs> and uh, so all those things were were I thought, yeah, this would be. I'd love to be a part of this this view, and I, I don't think also, and I know I'm going long winded, but with the answer, but I think now I'm sort of looking at a stage where this is what 
old age senior citizen sort of looks like. Uh, um, you're you're like forty, Ernie, right? Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've been forty for <laughs> such a long time. <laughs> so, but it's uh, yeah, it's uh, and I'm like, wow, that's that that ache. It's um, where I used to sort of brush it off, and I'd get busy, and a couple hours later, I forgot I even had it. Now it sort of lingers there for a while. Um, but also, I think the physical things, but also mental things, and I think the story sort of addresses that. How do you you know, how do you come to terms um, when you're facing that mortality? And, um, and I think Ryan, uh, you know, he, you know, I tease him because I get to be the the old boxing coach and he he gets to deal with all these physical ailments. But and, and I'm older than him, but it's uh, it's it's fine. It's kind of a, a running joke we've had for a long time. But um, yeah, I, I just uh, it's great to to be able to to work with him uh, on the work i the first question i asked Catherine hardwick i said i i loved i told her i love the ensemble and if i if i had my druthers i just have a complete ernie hudson as the lead movie and, I, and i'd have you direct all of them and it'd be great and she she was just nodding her head and said, yes 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 and so I, i'm regarding your longevity in the craft is it because you look at the work as not just um what's on the page you, you know what i mean like, the, it, like right. on a surface level do you actually dig deeper and henceforth that leads to curiosity and passion is that the reason why you've had such an extensive career as opposed to just saying oh being being complacent and saying okay i, I can just hang out at the golf course or whatever is that a right reason? well i think mean, i don't know you know i always say an actor never knows why he's not working he also never knows why he is working <laughs> you know nobody ever tells you the truth but i think there's um I, when I got into acting, it was sort of the it was the only thing that I felt that I was good at, and I knew I didn't have a second chance. And I, I've always I've always taken it really serious because you don't play with something that is that important. Acting for me, when I'm working, the world is at peace. You know, the wife's happy, the kids are good, the mortgage, the bankers are happy, everybody's happy. When I'm not working, it all falls apart, and I don't have another alternative. So, and the story, if this guy took the time to create the story, write the story, get out there, find money to do all that, to bring this thing to this point, I have an obligation to try and be honest with, to tell this story. And these are two men who've gone through some dark stuff. And my character luckily has sort of come out a little on the bright side, but it still is there. And um, so I don't know, maybe, but you know, I, like I said, I don't, I don't know, you know, it's, it's acting is one of those things, a little hard to, um, I was looking at some of the work that's sort of going to the UK and a lot of the work that's happening in Atlanta. And what I realized a huge difference is we don't have the training facilities for a lot of people who are coming into the business here in the States. And that's really, really unfortunate because it's, it's a little bit more than just waking up and saying, Hey, I, I can do that. Um, but um, so I so I don't know why I'm working, <laughs> but I I love what I do. But but I'm but it, I think it is a, you have to be curious. It is a curiosity about who is this person and who you know what is that life like and um, and I think that's the thing that really uh, drew me to Quantum Leap because what would it be like to be in someone else's shoes? I mean, really facing this crisis that they're facing. Um, and I think it's what we do in these stories that we we get a chance to tell um, to how, what is that like? Who are these people? What is what is that marriage like? What is that, that relationship? All those things. It's um, And I think audiences find that if it's honest, if it has integrity, they discover things about themselves in it as well. So it's not just entertainment, but there's also something that's that's teaching, learning, feeling you know that goes on in this this craft that we do it's really to me it's really important so you've been enjoying the quantum leap journey and just your journey as an actor in series work i, I looked at a recent interview you did and it was on youtube and they're saying I, I can't wait for the more more the family business more the family <laughs> business more the best. so between quantum leap the family business how, just overall just that that kind of diverse work lately has been great for you i mean yeah yeah no it, it to me quantum because 
I, when you get older, uh, as I've gotten, uh, thankfully, and, uh, you know, people begin to see you a certain way. And I think maybe there's an energy about me that, you know, I get into the, the dad thing, which is fine, because like I said, I've always been fascinated with, you know, those questions, fatherhood and all that. Um, so to play the dad is, is kind of cool. But family business is a different kind of dad. So, you know, as a guy who's head of this crime thing, and if, I think the first couple seasons, um, the family was sort of doing this kind of weird stuff. And I was always sort of the reasonable guy. And then uh, the last season, the character gets thrown into this awful situation. I wasn't even sure how we were going to get out of it. Um, and where he's in a mental institution and it's always happened to him. Um, and now the new season five, he's a kind of a different guy, you know? And, and so to be that active, uh, you know, I'm sort of strutting around with no shirt on, I'm in bathtub scenes and I'm, you know, I'm doing this crazy stuff that I don't get a chance to do in Ghostbusters, you know, in Ghostbusters, I'm, you know, so for me to be able to do, I love the Ghostbusters and I love Quantum Leap and, 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 and having the responsibility, but I also love family business because, um, yeah, there's a whole, you know, which speaks to the fact that it's all different worlds. Again, like I was saying, this story is it's a whole, it, it's, we're all on the same planet, but we're all living these very uniquely different, different lives and, and, and different worlds. Yeah. Ernie, I'm going to close with a couple of questions. And uh, first, first part of it is just from your extensive body of work, along with your series work. I, I am. Um, no worries. Okay. Yeah. You know what? A call came in and the whole thing went uh, crazy. Okay. Yeah, no sorry worries. about that. Yeah. So just a, a movie or series work from your body of work that you would recommend to our podcast watchers and listeners for them to see that you feel is uh, underrated or you really love, you know, so from your stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's some things that I really, really, um, I, I just love doing, you know, the hand of rocks and cradle always sort of comes to mind because it was, it was just, once again, getting a chance to tell a different story that I normally don't get a chance to tell a, a character to live in this world um, and see it from a different place. Congo has always been uh, one of the just just fun things that I, I really sort of um, enjoy. And I did a movie called Everything is Jake, which is, um, it never really got seen much, but um, it was really fun to to do. And, and uh, you know, I haven't had that, that role sort of tailor-made that, you know what I mean, that, really I, I, that you could just bring a hundred percent to on stage. I did a play called the great white hope years ago, and that demanded everything. And for an actor, you want to bring everything, but then it's not, you know, it's not encouraged because we're not doing that. You're the guy who comes in with the information and get the hell out of the way. So I'd love to be able to find that. But in the meantime, uh, there, there were those couple things that I really, um, feel like I got a chance to sort of bring a little bit more to play. And, and as you're leaving, Ernie, you were talking about fatherhood. It's been, been a theme of this conversation. I'm 51 going on 52. Is it, is it too late? Should I just have my niece as the, is the sun going down on my prospects? What, what, what is the honest assessment of my situation? I guess, you know, I think, no, I think we, we live life. We have these experiences and you have so much to offer. And I think being a father is, is giving, um, um, new human being, um, just an introduction to this crazy world. And there's so much you have to give. And I think it's really, really important. And it, to help someone live their best lives, it gives you an opportunity to live your best life. So I just think even if people don't have kids, I mean, you know, that uh, mentoring or fostering, it, it really, it, it you grow and you benefit so much from it. And I have friends who never took that on. And I think you, you missed something. So no, it's not too late, you know, and um, just make sure you, you do it under the best circumstances, you know, because it's not just you, but the other person that you're sharing that relationship with, if that's not right, it's, it's a nightmare, but, um, but yeah, no, good luck with, uh, with your quest. And um, I will say fatherhood is, it's, I think, the best thing, maybe the most important thing I've ever done with a questionable um, 
results, but uh, but I'm still I'm still <laughs> working on it. <laughs> thank you, Ernie, so, so much. I really enjoyed the film, and again, happy 40th birthday. Okay, so oh, thank you so much. Okay. Take care. All Take right. care. Bye bye. <laughs>